All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to EMPM. That stands for Engineering Major, Philosophy Minor. And this is the channel where you can get a working, at least for now, engineers' opinions on topics pertaining to engineering, philosophy, politics, social issues, cultural issues, etc. In today's video, we are talking again about vaccine mandates, but not about the mandates specifically, more about what someone's financial plan or um, someone's financial thoughts might look like when considering what's going to happen. So if you guys watched the previous video, I did mention to you guys in my little speech that I am in fact vaccinated. Um, I have a lot of friends who um, unfortunately are not and they're really concerned right now and I'm concerned for them honestly. And uh, not only that, but I also mentioned, I think, in the other video that recently the Moderna vaccine, there was a headline that allegedly uh, the booster shots for Moderna were approved. I would not at all be surprised if next week or the week after um, Joe Biden mandated booster shots, which would mean that my current vaccination status would actually not be um, eligible any longer. So perhaps the, the two shot will be valid until December 8th or something like that, but then there will be another deadline where people have to get booster shots. This is conjecture. I don't know if this is for sure. That said, I'm not very happy about that. I very begrudgingly took the first vaccination. I did not take the vaccination because of the mandates. I did it ahead of time. Um, but I was really reluctant to do this, um, but it was just a convenient thing to do because I was going to the doctor anyway. In fact, I went more out of my way than I really wanted to. That said, I am not excited about the potential for a booster shot mandate. Of course, during this time, we've all been worried, and I've jotted down a couple notes on um, what a you know, what my personal financial strategy is going to look at look like when considering the possibility of termination of employment. This is not meant to be financial advice. Um, for you guys, this is meant to be, you know, because I'm not an accountant and I'm not a finance person. This is just the things that I think about. So first thing that I wrote down on my list is, I want to understand and list all the financial liabilities that I may have due to my company um, and uh, other other debts, obviously, if you have like credit card debt or things like that, those would be other things to list. I personally don't have any credit card debt, thankfully, or any student loan debts or any automobile debts. Really, the only debt that I have is in real estate, um, but that's a little bit different situation than um, kind of liability debt. It's kind of more asset related debt. Anyway, um, you're going to want to understand. So in my case, I took a relocation package to come out here. Now the terms of that relocation package are that um, if I am not employed with a company for a year or longer, so less than one year, then I will have to repay that relocation package. Now, for some people, these re relocation package could relocation packages could be up to thirty thousand dollars. So that's a pretty penny. Um, mine isn't quite that high, but still, when you're about to lose your job and you know be out on your ass, the last thing you want is just a random thirty thousand dollar expense. Okay. The other thing that people might be looking at is tuition fees and um, tuition assistance from your company. Now, this again, um, typically companies will say, we will reimburse tuition as long as you're with the company for up to two years after graduation because they want to get their money's worth, fair enough. But if you had, say, a three-year-long uh, degree program, whether it be a master's program or an MBA, that could also be up to 30 grand. So, Let's say you're in a situation where you've hit both those boxes. You maybe uh, worked at a different location for a company. You took a new position. You got a relocation package, and that just so happened that it coincided with your, you know, year last year, and you graduated, and you got tuition reimbursement. 
um, and you're not meeting that one year threshold. And obviously if you're not meeting the one year threshold, then you're not meeting the two year threshold. All of a sudden that could be up to $60,000 that you're going to have to pay back the company. Now that's, that's a big expense. Last thing I'll mention on this topic is some companies, and I'm not entirely sure about the company that I work for, um, but some companies, when they give annual bonuses, you are required to work for a certain amount of time after that receipt of that bonus. Otherwise, you'll have to pay that back too. So um, if you are a really outstanding engineer, that could be, you know, 8000 bucks. You know, I mean, it could even be up to 10000 depending on where you're at, where you rank in the company. So that's brutal. So you could easily see a situation where 70, maybe 80 grand um, is going to have to get paid back to the company. Okay. So you want to understand what that is, or at least I want to understand what that is. So let's go ahead and move on to number two. Um, I have considered, and in fact, I've done this already, stopping all contributions to my 401k or retirement plan. Now, Typically, the way that a 401k works is your company will match a certain percentage of what you put in, which is great. And under any other circumstance, um, my personal opinion is that I want to maximize the amount that the company is matching. However, this also has a certain vest, what's called a vesting period. So what that means is um, usually around one year, you'll be partially vested. It's usually like 50%. So what that means is, let's say um, you contributed a thousand bucks to your 401k, your company contributed a thousand bucks to your 401k, but you leave after a year and you're only 50% vested. Well, what that means is the company is going to take 50% of what they matched you. So at the end of the day, when you, you had 2000, right? Because you contributed a thousand, your company did. But then once you, you know, lose your employment, 500 is going to get taken away from that. Um, that's if you've met one year or whatever your company's requirement is. If you're under that, all that thousand goes away and you're just left with a thousand bucks at the end. Problem is if it's in your 401k and you're not doing a Roth IRA, when you go to take that thousand out, if you need it for paying for things in item number one, you're going to get taxed on that. Um, so it's really going to be less than a thousand, um, when you take it out, if you are not vested at all from this point forward, um, or at least, you know, I, I am not vested at all. So I have stopped contributions to my 401k so that I can get some extra cash on hand. That way, when push comes to shove, if I need to get you know, laid off or terminated or force quit or whatever, I have extra cash to pay for the liabilities listed in number one. Okay. So number three, um, and this, these are in no particular order. So sorry if this seems out of order, you want to come up with a plan of where reimbursement funds for item number one will come from. Okay. So part of that might be number two, uh, discontinuing fund funding, going to your 401k. Now in my case, um, you know, I have savings and I have personal brokerage accounts. Um, now, what is a bummer about the personal brokerage account is obviously that is another um, place where I have decided to store money other than in cash or in a savings account. And it is an asset which can grow or potentially shrink in value, but it also pays dividends, etc. I had financial goals for the end of 2021 for the balance, you know, kind of the baseline average balance that I wanted to have in that account. Obviously I'm not going to be meeting those anymore. So in terms of a plan, um, I will have to pull from extra cash that I got from number two savings, and I'll have to consider selling, um, selling off assets in terms of stocks and things like that. Um, so, you know, I want to understand you know, I will go through and pick exactly which socks that I plan on selling off in what amounts, uh, how much I'm going to take from savings, etc. cetera. Um, you definitely want to plan this out because you don't want to be in a situation where you don't have the money and you have to remain in high interest debt. And I don't know if the debt back to the company would be high interest, but something to think about. Number four, um, I have suspended all leisure spending, only essentials. So let's talk about what essentials are. Food, water, 
electricity. That's about it. Um, I do still have a membership at uh, a climbing gym. Um, that is something I'm strongly considering getting rid of. Um, but in terms of even with food, you know, I'm not going out of my way to get extra fruits that I like or snacks that I like. This is bare essentials, exactly what my meal plan is every week. I'm going to do that. I've actually cut down a little bit on the amount that I'm eating as well. Not only does that help you stay lean, <laughs> um, which is maybe a, a little diamond in the rough there, a little silver lining, um, but you're also cut, obviously cutting down on grocery costs. Now, I will say that I am hungry frequently and it's annoying, but you don't want to do any leisure spending. The other thing for men specifically, and I know girls are going to complain when they hear this, but men, no more dates. Okay. If you're, you know, single and you've been going on dates and you've been paying for drinks and dinner and all this stuff, you got to stop doing that, man, because that could easily be, you know, 50 bucks a weekend adding up to 200, maybe 250 a month, depending on how fancy you guys are getting. Now, I have my opinions on how fancy you should be getting with initial dates, but some people like to go fancy and that can be an expense. So, um, you know, the other thing is maybe if you recently made a big purchase of something that you don't really need. So a good example for me is I recently bought a new video card because this was before the vaccine mandates went into place. This was before the, you know, potential Moderna booster um, and so I wanted to upgrade my computer even more so that I could make better content for you guys. And just because I like upgrading my computer, I got a refurbished video card. That means I cannot return that, but you better bet if I had got a brand new, you know, 3080 TI or 3090, um, you know, I would, I would be kicking that back and I'd be putting my old card back in my computer because it works well enough for now. And that would be potentially up to two grand um, that I need to get back. So no more leisure spending. Okay. Number five, it might be better to save your paid time off than spend it. So I believe, and you should definitely fact check this for yourself, but I'm pretty sure federal law requires that at upon termination, quitting, um, you know, uh, forced resignation, whatever your company must pay you a cash equivalent to your hourly wage in the amount of PTO that you have saved. So let's just pretend that I made 10 bucks an hour and I had 10 hours of paid time off that I did not use at the time of termination. And the company would have to pay me $10 an hour times 10 hours. That's a hundred bucks payout. I know that there's some people out there who say, well, I'm just going to use all my PTO now so that I don't have to go to work. All right. Well, you can, that that's a totally fine assessment for yourself. But in my personal opinion, I want that extra cash. Cause remember I could be liable for up to 60 grand from item number one. So that's why it's important to figure out what's why number one is number one, figure out your liabilities. And then you're going to come up with a plan with how you're going to cover those liabilities. In my case, part of that plan is not taking any PTO. Okay. So that means that the only time I would take PTO is if I got super, super sick and had to, um, which would, which would suck. Um, but you know, every, every hour is cash burned. Okay. Number six, I am actually looking at other jobs right now. Now this is not full-time engineering jobs that I'm looking for. The reason why is because I love my job. I love what I do. I want to keep coming in there and I still have, you know, hopes that a lot of this stuff will go away or they won't require booster shots or whatever. Um, I'm still holding out hope that this will work out, but I still am going to apply for part-time jobs and I'm going to work two jobs for a little bit because um, it's a lot better to be earning tenure towards updated benefits, different plan, just in case something falls through then I can switch over full-time in that what was my part-time job while I'm transitioning over looking for another um, more lucrative uh, more lucrative career option. Um, now, this is where 
you know, if you watched the previous video, you might have thought to yourself, why does EMPM keep saying, you know, this is like career ending or whatever? I mean, you just get fired from a job and you find a new job. Well, it is not going to be that way in the aerospace and defense industry. There are two reasons for that. Reason number one is that every single aerospace and defense company is doing this uh, vaccine mandate stuff. So that doesn't, that may not apply to me for the vaccinations that I have already, but if they start requiring booster shots, I am not into that. Um, and that, that's too much freedom for me to sacrifice. Okay. So, um, that, that's rule. No, that's thing. Number one, number two, um, if you are discharged from a company and you are fired with cause, which this very, this may very well be, a lot of companies haven't issued guidance on how exactly this is going to work. Um, some companies will kind of like, some companies will fire you with cause. Some companies will fire you without cause. Some, some companies can do what's called like a force quit. So it, in, it looks like you quit rather than actually getting fired. Um, whatever the case may be, it is really difficult to have something like that show up on your record and be competitive with other people who just towed the line and, you know, did what they did. So, uh, you know, this could potentially be career ending and that's exactly why you're going to want to have, um, or at least I want to see what all my other options are, make sure that I have a backup form of income and a backup form of um, uh, finances to carry me through what could be um, a couple months before, uh, maybe even up to three months before starting a different career. Um, so that is all that I wrote down. Um, and uh, one thing that I want you guys to take away from this is these are all the things that people, you know, federal contractors are having to think about right now or having to scramble. Now I'm a single guy. I don't have a wife and I don't have kids, but imagine what this is like, what this process is like for a man who has a wife and two, maybe even three kids that he has to think about. Um, and you know, maybe, maybe a new house, um, maybe, a, maybe a new life that was started. I mean, I moved out here from California. I know other people that moved out from California too, specifically for the freedom, specifically to escape um, what I what I call communism in California, basically. And um, this is a, this is a really big challenge for a lot of people. And I I understand if you're somebody who if you're kind of looking at me and thinking, well, you know, you're complaining, but you guys have it so well off. Like, welcome to welcome to real life. I mean, I, I sort of understand that perspective. Um, and uh, I definitely sympathize for people, but at the same time, you have to remember that we worked for what we have too. it, you know, a lot of this wasn't just handed to people. Um, some of us had certain advantages. Sure. Some of us didn't have advantages and got to the same point, but in general, this is a lot to lose for people. This is a big stick that the government is wielding and you're in a lose-lose situation because either you acquiesce to something that you don't believe in and sacrifice a little bit of freedom and risk the line continuing to get pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed against you and no one else is doing anything about it around you um, or you you know lose everything that you worked for basically for your entire life. Um, so I hope that, um, that you know, <laughs> This, this video sounds really pessimistic and a downer, but th this is the reality of what people are having to think about, the things that I'm thinking about. Again, this isn't financial advice. you got to figure out for you, but these are just some things to keep in mind. So I hope you guys enjoyed that video, and I hope that it was helpful to some of you to jog your brain on things to think about. Um, but I will be coming at you guys with more content later today. And thanks so much for watching and have a good one. Good luck out there. Stay strong um, and don't let this get too discouraging. You know, one way or another, one way or another, you know, we're going to make it through. So thanks. Later.